Hello everyone, welcome back to JLake3D. So today we're going to be working on an interesting video. Uh, obviously, if you looked at the top, it's the pattern tutorial and we're going to go in depth. So first of all, as you know, we have to start sketching. So let's go diagonal and we're going to sketch, if it would select, we're going to sketch a brick because we're going to be doing an arcway or archway, however you say it the right way. Correct me, someone. Uh, so again, when you're using the pattern tool, you have to plan ahead. Planning ahead is such a superpower, especially in Shaper, especially with parametric coming up. Planning ahead is crazy. So when we're making patterns, we have to plan ahead. Otherwise, let me show you an example of what not planning ahead would look like. So if, imagine if you're doing a brick and you do a pattern and they all look like this, that's not gonna be realistic at all. Bricks are not like that. So we need to account for things. For example, the concrete, and the shape so as you know bricks are usually lined up this way and then another half that way right so they can't be straight on top of each other first of all they need concrete second of all so we have to account for these things and we can start off by doing offset so let's go to loop instead of single and that's too much let's go 0.5 so we have one brick right and we can either copy the sketch or extrude this body and that kind of depends on what you're trying to do but in this case let's go ahead and actually sketch and you can either copy this up or sketch manually i like to sketch it manually because even if you sketch it all only to here this is still considered part of the sketch and a closed loop so we can offset that with 0.5 just like we did on the bottom even though we didn't sketch that line but now that we have our pieces let's go ahead and extrude those because we need objects to actually use the pattern tool on it and we could do sketches too but i mean we don't really need sketches although you could have technically done the pattern with the sketches as well but it's so much nicer to actually see what you're working with right so let's go ahead and make these actually look like bricks by changing these to reddish brown and this is close enough in my opinion let's go back to modeling and once we have that let me go ahead and show you there's two options in the pattern tool so if you click on the thing here on the left side we have linear and circular we're going to start off with linear and show you kind of how it works so you select by single clicking your object you can then align where you want it to go as your center and we have two options here total distance and total spacing so what we can do is if we move this let's say this way if you look here for spacing we have 20 millimeters right that's each one of these is a 20 millimeters right other than the 0.5 gap that we made on each side but uh it keeps to the original constraint of this this the location of where it's at as you can see there's gaps between here for the concrete it kept it all, all because we did the spacing correctly so another thing as you see the quantity is three you see three here but technically the logic would be that this would be one then two and then three here right but it counts the original one as part of your equation so consider that when you're doing your math because when you go to total distance that's actually quite important because remember each brick is 20 millimeters so 20 40 60 and you're seeing 40 you're thinking what the heck is wrong with, with this right but it's counting only your total of the new ones minus this one so moving on with with the uh, with this we can also do one more thing is while we have the pattern to the right we can also go up and we have to also make sure we understand that since we have two objects selected and we go up by 40 millimeters it it created a total of four additional ones because stacked vertically right so uh, if you go to total spacing versus uh this one we have the same amount but now we've kind of doubled our output so just something to keep in mind let's go ahead and increase the quantity here to a total of 10 and total of five over here so we have this little shape and then another thing we can do while we're here is we want to finish this off so let's go ahead and double click these to select i know this is not a pattern tool but you could just copy these over by 20 and then before you do the replace face tool let's go ahead and select these edges first that way it doesn't have to think as hard and then you click 
replace face and then find the odd one out as you see here because it chooses that as the target face because we need this as the target face then click done and we've basically finished off our wall at least one side of it right because the other side i'm going to show you how to use the pattern tool and a uh, round uh, function so first of all what i want to show you also how to do is if we go to the bottom here make sure you click bottom instead of actually clicking the bottom of the brick because remember there is a 0.5 gap so draw a circle we're going to use that as a plane then if you go over here and you line it up you can tell that there is a 0.5 millimeter gap there that will show you that that's the bottom so we're going to use this as our plane then double click it and then we want to draw a line so technically we can draw off site to make our life easier but let me just show you how to do it straight up so we go here and for our distance we did 10 by 20 technically i could just put in the dimension here let's do 200 for the dimension let's see if that's accurate we have an additional one let's try 210 and that's the total cool so now we have a line here and we can offset this make sure you're in single for this by five on each side and then close the sketch by drawing a line and again uh, you can either sketch or for example you could have sketched a line in the center as well and then selected this line then choose the mirror function although i'm not seeing it here so you can go to transform mirror then select this line and then select this center so this there's one way to do it you could have just manually sketched but i'm just showing you alternatives because those are important to have so why are we doing this well first of all i'm doing this because later on i want to use this as a reference so what we can do is if we hide our linear pattern and we go to the left face in this case we can go up by i guess 210 again we'll see if that's accurate but let's do the same thing here or we could just offset obviously by 10 and close our sketch this time let's do it manually and then we're gonna offset this as a loop again for our concrete right so let's go by hmm, let's do one for now see if that works and then what we can do is tools and sweep this next and use this line that we just created and then click done and unhide our linear pattern or bricks and i made that way too tall but uh let's go down here and then let's see this is well the easy way to measure would be just to replace the face and then go down by 0.5 millimeters so it's 98.5 let's do 98 that way it's hidden in the bricks so this is just one way to show you that although we do have a pattern tool there is still some manual labor to be done so let's hide our sketch so it's out of the way and then we need to move this to 209.5 so it's inside let's actually make it 209 to put it inside of our model so see it's coming together but there is still some work left to be done so let's also put this in and another way to do this is if you just go to transform move you select this and then move it over by one millimeter so there's multiple ways of moving stuff there's also the pad uh, the translate tool there's the line tool you know there's different ways but this is just one thing to keep in mind and again we had that line reference because now guess what to use the round pattern we actually have to use a reference because if we go to pattern and then select this well where do you want to align it unless you know exactly like you need it there and you go to circular well first of all i hate that when you change the uh circular or linear pattern it resets the orientation but let's say if you know you need it there then great but how often is that so we need to actually use our sketches so let's go ahead and select make sure you double click the right thing so we're going to use that sketch plane and we want to use uh, at the half point basically so if we have here 10 millimeters that's a half point let's draw a line here and then choose this half and then we'll go across by 210 just to make it equal and then we want to draw an arc so let's draw an arc first of all and let's move it oh, oh. everything's locked in place let's uh 
let's see there we go sometimes those uh, constraints get in the way a little bit but uh, make sure it's 180 degrees in this case because we're doing an arc uh, so uh, another thing I'm mentioning is we're keeping it at the center for a reason if you don't have it in the center it's going to be skewed when you pattern so let's go ahead and tell you about the uh, pattern tool for circular as well so once you select one thing see I put it there in the half for a reason let me show you why first of all if you don't put it in the center and you make a pattern go to the edge of the circle to align it to the center uh, but uh, let me just show you if we go 180 degrees you can see that it's already misaligned because it's a skewed perception see it's going sideways but if you go and you transform pattern on this one let's align it better and you go 180 degrees on this one it's aligned perfectly centered with the other one so make sure you keep in mind so and i'm going to show you how to do this even though it's not aligned but obviously let's go ahead and show you so uh, unless you're a math genius i don't know how much it takes let's just start by guessing that's obviously too much let's go to 15 that's too little so 17 18 so 17 seems like the perfect number of bricks considering our 20 by 10 size and as you can see they're all perfectly aligned in the sense that we have to slightly turn them to make this transition in the first place so now that we have that we click done and before and before we move on to the other piece what I want to do is to show you the other parts of the pattern so if we have this piece right here and we align our center let's do 180 just like before but uh, what you can do here is instead of total angle you could do spacing angle and spacing angle works slightly different as you see it was 180 total and now we only have three and it divided those into 90 degree segments because you know 180 divided by 2 is 90 so what we can do here is for example if we have um, I don't know let's say six degrees here uh, or maybe let's do 12 for example then we can add a number of items and it goes based on the spacing of your degree so if you do your math correctly you can get better results in that sense and another thing is that you have the option to have it either rotated or uniform and uniform basically just means everything's straight and round rotated means everything's rounded to your rotation so just things to keep in mind fyi all right let's go ahead and undo that and move on what we need to do now is basically copy it over and we have this circular pattern here so what we can do is copy it and move it up by 10 actually let's move it down so let's make it down by 10 to go to the bottom and then deselect the copy function and make sure you align it with the circle instead of letting it twist as it wants and then we kind of have to turn it to make sure it's aligned there let's do six uh let's do 5.5 that way it looks more in tune and then what we need to do is delete this extra one because it's in our way right and we can verify if it's proper if we select this pattern here and we copy it and move it over by 210 we could have mirrored it we could have patterned but you know so let's see if this looks identical or rather close enough I guess would be the term and it does so what we can do now is copy these two over so let's go ahead and select them and use the pattern tool here on the left make sure it's linear this time and then we want to go up let's do spacing 20 since we have the four and then quantity we want let's try four five then we click done and we kind of have our pattern so just make sure that it's identical obviously it's not perfect like you know how it's 0.5 here to total of one millimeter if you click the lines you'll see on the bottom says one millimeter on the sides here it's going to be slightly different because there's an angle so it's 1.1571 and then here it might be slightly different as well so it's 0.6949 there so 
it's not exact an exact science so to speak but uh, this is kind of how you turn the pattern and kind of looks close enough and then we can also verify from the top if it looks similar on both sides and it does and I think that's the goal here and then to finish off what we can do remember we have that uh, line there we already have the concrete in place so what we can do with that is tools sweep that face using that line on the bottom if we select it right we'll actually click next I forgot to click next then use the line on the bottom and now we have our concrete in place and it's going along our pattern so click done and then for the other one simply draw a line here in the center and select it by double clicking click more mirror and use that center line basically have your complete piece and if we turn it over this way and hide the sketches we can see that we have an arc and if we go to visualization this shows us an even more realistic perspective and if you look here you can even see this the concrete inside so this is just one way of doing the pattern tool obviously there's more but this gives you a realistic expectation of how it can save your time and and at the same time where it can't because yes it does help but you still need to work with it to make it actually work so i hope you guys learned something don't forget to like share and subscribe if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and i will see you guys in the next one here at J Lake 3D, our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.